I'm Eric Hendrickson, and I'm here to help you photograph this weekend's eclipse, the tool you'll need to protect your phone. If you've been watching, you've noticed that all week we've been helping you prepare for this Saturday's eclipse over Central Texas. The first of two eclipses is going to pass over our state in just the next few months. And we've talked about the glasses that you need, but we're also talking about some other things. If you want this to be something in your memory for a long time, take a picture. But photographing the eclipse can be a little tricky. So joining us this morning is KXAN senior science reporter Eric Hendrickson with why taking a photo of an eclipse is um, a little complicated. It's a little complicated. You could damage your phone if you don't do it properly. Oh, well, there you so go. that's a pretty good reason to take some precautions, <laughs> right? So yeah, just like we need eclipse glasses to look at the sun, the camera on your phone needs some added protection as well. If you point your camera toward the sun and hold it there for any length of time, you're going to concentrate so much heat it's going to ruin your phone camera, and you're not going to get a good picture anyway. Doug Duncan has led Eclipse tours for more than 20 years. He says his tour groups frequently ask him how to take a photo with their phone without damaging it. So he developed Solar Snap, basically Eclipse glasses that attach to your phone. It also comes with a companion app that ensures that you get the perfect pic. Your phone was designed for faces and for scenery. So I spent the pandemic um, working with a phone programmer and experimenting and testing until we got it. So it's very easy to, um, you know, take pictures with your phone. Dr. Duncan says the filter used on the solar snap is 1,000 times darker than sunglasses. Mm -hmm. It costs about six bucks and can be bought at Lowe's and Home Depot. Be sure to check out digital reporter Sam Stark's story at KXN.com to learn more about how they work. And another couple tips courtesy of NASA. Uh, make sure you practice ahead of time. The eclipse will last several hours, but the peak of it will be just a couple minutes. So you don't want to be fumbling with your phone as you're trying to like <laughs> hurry up. And then also use a tripod or some sort of holder to make mm. sure your phone doesn't like your photos are not blurry. blurry. Yeah, hold it still. It's and then cool. maybe enter your photo into our comp our competition. We have a monthly competition right. on our yeah. website, so send us your photos. We'll probably feature it. <laughs> I feel like taking <laughs> pictures of the eclipse with your phone is not going to get you the best best yeah, quality this might photo. Be a disappointment. No. <laughs> Unless you got the little filter. Now I will say this. Well, I've done a lot of these stories. Uh -huh. I've had to take a lot of photos of the sun in the last few weeks. And so far, I've been kind of like taking my eclipse glasses and right, doing like right. this oh, cool. little thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It hasn't been the smoothest. I'm pretty sure I looked weird doing it in my backyard, <laughs> but what can you do? Yeah. But when you win the contest but when next you win month, the contest, who's going right. to say yeah. anything? Don't use your phone if you want to win the contest. <laughs> <laughs> Get a nicer camera if you can.